If I'd carried on eating fish like I was doing in the last series, I'd have developed fins by now. And actually, I'm bored to death with fish, and I want to get back to a bit of simple peasant cooking and some red meat. And for those of you who are vegetarians, switch off, because this programme is really going to upset you. Richard, who is our cameraman here, come down, look at the ingredients, and I'm going to show you what it all is. This is some lovely fatty and gristly shin of beef. It's important that it's shin because the veins and the gristle make it a very unctuous flavour when it's finally cooked. I've picked in some little holes and stuffed in some garlic into all of them. That's quite an important thing to do. Over we go, Richard. Little shallots, beautifully peeled. Fresh garlic. Orange peel. An onion stuffed with cloves. Can you see that all right? Just three cloves and an onion like that. Some very fresh herbs, rosemary, a dried bay leaf, that's not a fresh herb, <laughs> fresh thyme and fresh parsley, some chopped up tomato, okay, some fatty pork or bacon, and some bacon without any fat on it, and a bowl of mushrooms. But because this is a Floyd programme, and we always cook in lemonade, as you know, one of the most essential things is going to be a bottle of good strong red wine because you'll probably need half a bottle to go into the uh, into the dish itself and you're going to need half a bottle to go into yourself to make things really cheerful so with a little olive oil and our lean and our fat bacon we get the pan up to frying speed it's highly humorous isn't it frying speed and whack it now that it's golden brown leaving the fat behind into our marmite, which is this lovely earthenware pot, from which slow cooking beef really benefits from being popped into that kind of thing. But if you have to use aluminium or tin, it doesn't really matter. Then into the fat we put our pieces of beef, which you'll remember I stuffed little cubes of garlic into. This is the importance of frying speed, you see, because it quickly browns the meat. And a little tip here, we've got to put some salt on, but you never put salt on. Isn't this cracking noise loud? It's funny, isn't it? It's real cooking, you see. Um, you never put salt on meat until it has been sealed. Otherwise, it lets out all of the flavours. Salt on like that. Black pepper. Like that. Really hard round. That's obviously got to cook for a moment or two. I'll have a quick slurp. And then, you see, come back, Richard, you're too far away, please. Come back, you've got that nicely, nicely sealed and browned. And it goes straight away. Now, this is quite difficult. Can you see into this pot? We lift it into the bacon, which is already there. One, there's a piece per person here, by the way. One piece per person. Give them plenty, my old sergeant major used to say. One per man per day. There we are. There is the first part of our dough. Now we add the rest of the ingredients. Richard, you'll have to follow me back because all these other things now have to go in. And the first thing is a Triggs Potter, OK? Triggs Potter, a little landmine, no, a sea mine, an onion with its cloves, the four or five pieces of orange peel, plate full of little shallots or small pickling onions if you haven't shallots, some of these mushrooms, like that, OK? Then one sprig of rosemary can go in. Look, this is looking rather pretty, actually. A bay leaf has gone in. A spriglet of thyme. Don't overdo the herbs. And a little packet, as we say in French, of parsley. Cover the lot with the tomatoes, like that. I'll just lift that to you so you can see. It looks rather attractive. looks like the front of an Elizabeth David book. Actually, I shouldn't insult her like that. She's one of the finest cooks there ever was. And then in with our lovely bottle of wine. All you now have to do is put the lid of that onto that and into the oven.